In this video, we are going to explore using connected alignments with corridors to create the grading for an incoming tributary. To get started, create offset alignments from the centerline alignment we created in the previous video. Set the offset distances, style, and labels. Now click the Create Offset Profile tab. Connected alignments require both alignments and profiles to work. Create offset alignments for the incoming tributary as well. Be sure to create offset profiles. Notice I have set the cross slope to zero for both sets of offset profiles. With the offset alignments and their corresponding profiles created, we can now create connected alignments. From the Home tab in the ribbon, click Alignment. Now select Create Connected Alignment. Select the alignments that you would like to connect. The first alignment you select starts the new alignment, so the order to which you select the alignments does matter. Click where you'd like to make the connection. This determines the incoming curve. Name the connected alignment, select an alignment style and label set. Now click the parameters tab. This will help shape the connection. Choose a curve group type, radius, degree of curvature, offset in and out, and connection overlaps. Click the connected profile tab. This will determine how the profiles from the two alignments will interact. For this, I uncheck the cross slope option. Adjust the curve type and set the radius. You can adjust the connection by clicking on it and adjusting the alignment using the grip handles. Follow the same steps for the other connection. Once these steps are completed, the connection between the alignments will be dynamic and will adjust to the position of the alignments. Set up the assembly and subassemblies to create a corridor. For this example, I created three assemblies to use to grade the floodplain. I have a floodplain grading video that you can watch linked above if you would like a more detailed description of how to set up a corridor for floodplain grading. The third assembly will be built later in this video. Hang tight while I put together the second assembly. With the assemblies all set, we will now put together a corridor. The main stem reach, along with the tributary and its connections, will be put into a single corridor. To get started, I will build a corridor just using the main stem as the baseline. Appropriately set all of the targets and frequencies for the corridor. Now split a region out of the corridor. With the corridor selected, click Split Region in the ribbon. Now click where the curve starts for the PC on the connected alignment. Click the new region again and click on where the curve ends, or the PT, on the other connected alignment. This is where I build the third assembly. Had I created the connected alignments going the other direction, I could have used my second subassembly rather than having to create a third. Select the new region and in the ribbon select region properties to change the properties of this region. From the edit corridor region pop-up, we are going to change the assembly that defines this region of the corridor. Change it so that the corridor is no longer defined outside of the right bankful line. Select the corridor and select Edit Targets from the ribbon. Select the region and press Enter. Now ensure that the region is targeting everything correctly. You will notice that I have to define the surface in a couple of places. All of the rest of the targets seem to be correct. To add the connection pieces, we have to define a new baseline. Click the corridor, and from the ribbon, click Add Baseline. Define the alignment and profile that will be used for the new baseline. To add a new region to the corridor, select the corridor, and from the ribbon, click Add Region. Now click near the baseline of the region we want to add. Snap to where we want to add the region. In this case, it is at the PC to the PT of the connection alignment. Select the assembly you want to use for the region, and click OK. Here, I set the target surface, but it is easier for me to set the rest of the targets from the other menu. Click OK. Now you can click the corridor, then click Edit Targets in the ribbon, and set all the targets for this region. To close the gap for the missing corridor information, click on the corridor, then click Edit Frequency in the ribbon. Change frequencies to add more definition to the corridor. At the bottom of the frequency to apply assemblies window, click the green plus sign, then click the corner that is missing the data. 
I use a snap at the apparent intersection to get the correct point. Click OK. Now walk through the same process for the north connection alignment. Once this is complete, the corridor will be defined at the connection. Using this process helps ensure that elevations work appropriately for the incoming tributary. To fill the gap, I extend the north connection alignment until it is in line with the south connection alignment. Then I extend the definition of the region to go to the full length of the extended alignment. Once again, edit the definition frequencies of this region so that there is more definition and that it is defined at the missing corner, at the connection point. Now we are simply going to add one more baseline for the remainder of the tributary channel. Add the baseline for the reach, then add the region into the definition of the corridor using the full grading assembly. Once this is complete, build a surface from the corridor. Now you have a surface that you can use stream tools on for your three-dimensional channel design. Don't forget to like our video, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you for watching.